Hey, Randy. Hi, Randy. I always like seeing a Randy. Yeah. How are you? Good. 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 I'm okay. Let's, Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So. I hear you, but she was telling me you guys just didn't No. I, I did. Dan Meyer. Dan Meyer. Oh, Dan Meyer. Right, right. Not you. Not that. Yeah. I, I skipped that time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting lucky oh, sometimes. Oh, that was yeah. convenient. How's your guys' duration? Third place. Oh, yeah, it was, wow. it was fun. Wow. Had a great start. Yeah, it's a good We're doing okay. Yeah. We've only done eight weeks. Yeah. And it's supposed to be some days. We're oh. running out of summer. But I'm gonna, uh, we're going to do the, um, um, the what? The yeah, actual requirement. Yeah. Really? Okay. So we're, we're going to do, I'm going to do the start of the north. And well, there's the last one. We're all sitting back to the yep. What did you say? There's Lana. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the sun's going to come. It's still coming, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you know, another gorgeous day. Um, continue to pray for rain, of course, but it's really nice not to have it on Sunday morning. Um, anyway, I'm really pleased to be outdoors with you again today and to welcome Susan Daughtry, the Reverend Susan Daughtry, yay, um, who's our missioner for formation and our preacher today. And um, she'll make some announcements at the end, too, which and it's really great having you here, Susan. And Guy Drake is back. Um, and um, for those of you who didn't know, he had shoulder surgery, and he's here to be, to serve as deacon, it, with sling and all, so, yep. great. So, um, I invite all who are able to please stand. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, 
may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. please be seated <clears throat> A reading from Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers against enemies of blood and flesh, against cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and, having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the psalm as printed in your bulletin. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of all will reveal himself in some way. Lord God of hosts, hear at my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. 
When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's really great to be here with you. Thank you for having me out here to St. David's. I see some familiar faces. Um, My name is Susan Daughtry. I serve as your missioner for formation. What that means is that I work with Bishop Loya and your other ECMN missioners to uh, serve all of the congregations in the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. And mostly what I work on is our school for formation, which is a series of courses anybody could take, including yourselves. Uh, to grow in your faith. Here is an interaction that takes place quite regularly in my home. It's early morning. My son, who is six years old, comes down the stairs, and I say, good morning, Luca. And he says, my name is (laughs) Spider-Man. But you think my name is Peter Parker. Do we have any Marvel Universe fans here in the crowd today? Any Star Wars fans? Thank you. Um, thank you. I see you. It is, it is important uh, to know sort of these key cultural icons. In my house, there are two really big uh, superhero and Star Wars fans, my husband and my son. And because uh, Luca is six years old, when we clean up his room, what we are cleaning up is costumes of Spider-Man and Black Panther and Batman and... Um, I think he's got a couple of like stormtrooper costumes and lightsabers and Star Wars figurines. There's a, uh, what's the name of the ship? The Millennium Falcon. There's like a plastic one of those we got at a yard sale. It's everywhere. He is fully imagining himself in this universe when he plays. And he's also, maybe I'm not a child psychologist, but I think there's something about kids developmentally. There's just a lot of like punching and kicking. There's a lot of active violence that happens in my home, not intended to wound, but he's imagining himself in this role of being Batman or being Luke Skywalker with the lightsaber, right? (laughs) My husband is also a practitioner of a martial art called Aikido. Has anybody ever heard of Aikido before? Yeah. Um, If there's a spectrum of martial arts from um, sort of most... uh, Uh, most likely to break a kneecap, to least likely. Aikido is on the least likely end. I like to sort of joke with people who aren't familiar that jujitsu, the goal is to break your opponent's kneecap. And in Aikido, the goal is to use your attacker's energy to put both of you in a safe place where you can renegotiate your relationship. (laughs) Aikido literally means, uh, it's from the Japanese, it literally means the way of peace or the way of harmony with ki. And it really is about putting, you know, when the, when the attack comes, you are training your body not to meet it with force and bracing, but to blend with that energy in order to put the other person down safely and to pin them respectfully. We started putting Luca in some kids' Aikido classes, and, and you can imagine like six-year-old energy. He is so stoked about the gymnastics elements of this. He's rolling, he's flipping. There's not a lot of like kicking and punching in Aikido, but he's, he's beginning to learn some of what is essentially choreography, 
when Aikido practitioners compete or when they practice, it's not about actual fighting. It's really a lot more like dancing. It's highly scripted, and people don't typically, typically get hurt. Right now, he's really into those gymnastics elements. He wants to move his body. He wants to push and pull against other bodies. I hope that he practices Aikido long enough. It'll be his choice, but I hope he practices long enough to get to, get to the point where he can learn how to pin another person's body safely and respectfully and to be pinned. And beyond that, I hope he gets to what the Shihan of our dojo says is the real meat of Aikido, the real purpose of it, which is to recognize the forces of violence within your own self and to practice the physical movements of meeting violence, not with strong, forceful violence in return, but with the kind of skillful movements that can change a relationship. And so in that way, Aikido sees itself really as a spiritual practice. The writer of Ephesians didn't practice Aikido. I think we can all be clear about that. Aikido is a martial art that comes from Japan. And it's, um, there's a lot of things about the book of Ephesians we don't know. We aren't entirely sure who the author was. It purports to be Paul, but we know that many of the letters in the New Testament were written by people using Paul's name in order to spread their message, right? And we're not even sure exactly who the people that the letter to the Ephesians is for. There's a lot of things that we don't know. In addition to that, there are some things that make this letter tricky for modern Christians. The writer of this letter is much more um, comfortable with accommodating the cultural norms of the time as they related to women and relationships between parents and children and the relationships between enslaved people and, and slavers. The writer is much more willing to accommodate those cultural practices. But there's one thing I think we can be pretty clear about with the letter to the Ephesians, and that is that I, I find it hard to believe that they would not have been very familiar with the experience of military occupation and military violence. The Roman Empire that occupied huge parts of the Western world was known for its efficacy and its efficiency and its violence. Prior to that, there were military occupations over and over again for the Hebrew people. They knew down in their soul what it meant to come upon a soldier dressed in a breastplate and carrying a shield and a sword. They understood what it meant to be a people who found foreign soldiers calling the shots and imposing punishment. And they knew imperialist oppression down in their bones, in their collective psyche. So Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus whose movement the writer, to the, uh, the, the writer of the letter to the Ephesians is calling upon, Jesus of Nazareth grew up in a culture that was not experiencing military colonialism for the first time when the Romans arrived. <coughs> So I want you to notice a couple of key things about the military images in the text from Ephesians today. You have it in front of you in your bulletin. There's four things I want you to notice. The first thing is that this text about putting on the full armor of God turns oppression and violence on its head. All of the items that the writer described are meant to be tools not for violent, offensive action, but for defensive and peaceful action. Everything in this letter about those military images of armor is about defending for the sake of peace. The second thing I want you to notice is that the enemy in this metaphor is not other human bodies. This is not about putting on armor in order to withstand the literal attack from a person standing before you. This is about the spiritual forces of evil. If you remember back to your baptismal covenant, we know we can find the forces of violence and destruction in our own selves and in our own souls and bodies, but we also know that we find it in the systems and structures of the world we inhabit. We know that when we look at the history of white supremacy in this country, that it is not just a 
fringe ideology held by a few, but the very structure underneath how we live and move through the world. We can look at extractive capitalism and see the impact of the way we consume and eat and live on the literal habitat we inhabit. And yet it is so difficult to change those systems because they are so big and so foundational to everything we do. That is what this writer to the letter of the Ephesians is talking about. The spiritual forces of evil, meaning these deeply systemic structures upon which we live, structures that separate and destroy human lives. The third thing I want you to notice is that part of the point of the military metaphor this writer is using is leaning on one of the real positives in military experience, right? Which is the unity, the sense of shared brotherhood, connection, being a part of a team that is bigger than yourself. And so when the writer to the letter of the Ephesians continues to say pray for each other so that you can stand firm, that's part of what he or she is doing. They are bringing this metaphor together and turning it on its head, not to be warriors to take over a place, but people who are so deeply connected to each other in prayer for the purpose of proclaiming God's vision. And all of it, this is the fourth point, all of it is about standing firm for the sake of proclaiming God's vision of peace with boldness. For this writer, being made strong in God's power means God's powerful vision of shalom, of beloved community, of the great feast on the mountaintop where every tear is wiped away, where the lion lays down with the lamb and no one gets eaten, and both are not just safe but able to rest and feast together. There's one weapon in the text. Does anybody find it? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There's a um, scholar who I was reading this week who says this about the sword of the spirit, in case you were worried about the sort of aggressive lightsaber image there. It is not the word which slays, but the word of peace that unites humanity, which had formerly been divided and alienated. The good news for us who follow the way of Jesus is that this way of peace we are about is not about accommodation to injustice. It is not about the absence of conflict. It is about standing firm to proclaim, even when you are under attack, God's vision of the reconciliation of all peoples. Jesus' way in this letter to the Ephesians is fundamentally a nonviolent way, but it is a way of absolute clarity clarity about God's vision of beloved community and clarity that it will become that it will be attacked that it will not be received with joy all the time i'm excited to see the work that you all are preparing to do with the program uh, that Catherine told me about the next faithful step that to me seems like one way people here at St. David's might choose to put on this armor that the writer of a letter to the Ephesians is speaking about You uh, see in your weekly e-news and perhaps in your bulletin as well, also um, the upcoming Bishop X forums. Bishop Loya has some key priorities around how we live out our faith with with respect to justice. Um, And there are some events coming up in that uh, series that will speak directly to those issues as well. I think the question that this text is offering us for this week is really what of these items the breastplate, the shoes, the sword, the helmet. What of these items call out to you? What of these items are the ones that you need to be made strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power of reconciling justice? What is it that will make you ready, not just to proclaim the gospel of peace, but to stand firm when the spiritual forces of destruction are on the attack? Amen. Amen. We believe in one God.
Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, seen with the Father, through him all things were made. For our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People. Father and Mother God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray in thanksgiving for those recently baptized, writer Drake Strathy and Lincoln Scott Johnson, Luke David DeGeneres, Bennett Jean Shear and Lauren Catherine Wilcox. That her name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Richard, Ted, Marie, William, Jack, Lori, Christina, Lori, Guy, Lena, Maureen, Dan, Peter, Allison, Jerry, Julie, Margot, Joan, Jojo and family, Amara, Thomas, Peg, Ken, and Jim. They may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, especially Ed Vignal and Adam Holtz. That light perpetual shine upon them. May we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. <laughs> God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah, I think I talked to you. I understand.
All right, we'll be spending some more time together. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> The move. <laughs> so this morning, I will invite people to come to receive communion here in line. Um, at, when the time comes, we'll just continue to receive in bread form only. Walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have, made a, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
<laughs> Could you hear me? Yeah. Yes. It has lots of notes on it. <laughs> oh, I don't have my notes, but there we go. Please, sta uh, please stand. Um, I forgot to pray the spiritual communion prayer, which we pray because we're um, live. This is going out on Facebook Live, and um, people who are not receiving communion, this is a, a prayer that we offer with them. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where bread and wine are offered, I offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and for all the blessings of this life. I also give thanks for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and for the blessings given me. I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. While I cannot receive communion at this time, I know that you are always with me. Help me embrace you with all my heart, soul, and mind. Give me the strength and courage to participate in your work to heal and redeem your world until I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen. And um, have Steve Johnson come on up. And Steve will be taking communion today to Denny and Kathy Johnson. So we offer our sending forth prayer. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share the one bread and the one cup. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us along the way. So make haste to love, be quick to be kind, and the God of compassion will go with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
please be seated for a few announcements. <clears throat> again, good morning. And again, Susan, thank you for being with us as our preacher. I just, um, the images you offered this morning are so ripe yeah. in so many ways, maybe across the, the centuries and also just today. It's just so ripe, this need for peace and those moves that we need to make internally um, and in the world. Um, Susan's going to offer some announcements, um, but I want to say one other thing about her sermon. She mentioned the Next Faithful Move workshop that will be offered here at St. David's. This Thursday's email started to promote this series that we will be offering here. And so I want you to make sure to pay attention to these announcements that are coming out about this. This is an intercultural anti-racism workshop that, that we'll, we'll do kind of a teaser event on September 8th. It's a Wednesday evening. We'll do a teaser to kind of and introduce the two trainers who will be part of this, Joe Davis and uh, David Shearer. Um, and then we want people to sign up for this. The, the registrations will be limited. Um, the sign-ups will happen up until, I think, early October, and then the first session starts in October, and it'll be monthly, October, November, and on. Um, so pay attention. This is um, really a part of our work as in uh, confronting the systems um, that the letter to the Ephesians that Susan talked about today. Susan, why don't you offer some words now? I know. Um, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to invite you to find this page in your bulletin, the one with the big purple stripe across it. Um, I'm here today bringing you greetings from Bishop Loya. Has he gotten to come visit St. David? Late yet? September. He's coming soon, so you're going to hear a lot more about this from him, but he is... Um, in his listening, uh, in the whole discernment of his calling to the Episcopal Church in Minnesota, and in the work he's done since he has arrived here, he's really refining this vision of four priorities. And you can see them here in the purple. Discipleship, faithful innovation, justice, and vitality. And if those feel a little bit abstract to you, allow me to paint you a little bit of a picture. Imagine a congregation as a great tree. You can look at a tree in full leaf and know when it is alive. One of the ways you know that it is alive in this metaphor of congregations is that it has deep roots and a strong trunk. Those deep roots are essential. Without them, the tree is going to fall over and die. Without those healthy... Uh, um, I read this book I was trying to sell to somebody earlier this morning, David. I was trying to get him to read this book called The Secret Life of Trees. This is a total aside. I just think it's an excellent book. But anyway, um, continuing in this metaphor, the deep roots and the strong trunk are our discipleship. How do we bring ourselves as a community and as individuals into abiding in Jesus? How do we let ourselves be transformed by those close encounters with the Son of God? The natural outgrowth of that discipleship looks like two things. It looks like faithful innovation. It looks like new ways of saying yes to what the Holy Spirit is doing around us, new ways of responding to who Jesus is, ways that might be deeply ancient in their roots but might look different for this congregation in this moment. That's the kind of natural adaptation that living things do, right? Another natural outgrowth of discipleship is the pursuit of justice. It's the pursuit of becoming the beloved community and seeking to live aligned with the way of Jesus. That's what it looks like to see a truly vital, alive, congregational tree. That's the metaphor he's working with. So I would invite you to um, lean in again to the program that Catherine and others here have built, um, The Next Faithful Step. That's a really key part of this work. The Bishop X Forum um, that is in your weekly e-news is another opportunity. And I wouldn't be, um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't put in a plug for the School for Formation. Uh, schoolforformation.org, you can find out a lot more information there. But we offer courses that anyone can join in um, fully online with some Zoom meetings. Um, highly interactive instructors and a great community of folks from all over the Episcopal Church and sometimes beyond. There are courses on everything from scripture to church history to what the heck is happening with all the stuff at the altar that we do every Sunday, the Book of Common Prayer, but also um, a course that does kind of the baseline work that you all have done around the intercultural developmental development inventory and other things. So what a pleasure it is to be with you all today. 
I'm excited for you to get to meet Bishop Loya in a few weeks, and I'm, I'm going to keep you in my prayers as you continue on navigating this Delta situation. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Um, just a few other things. Thank you to our musician, our adaptive, uh, ad faithful innovation adapters. Um, our musicians, our sound, Paul, thank you. Our altar guild and our faithful leaders who just continue to figure out how to adapt in these times. That We're just figuring it out. We are still planning to be indoors September 12th kickoff Sunday um, and we w are requiring masks there's more information in our emails uh, one service that day it's going to be a lot of fun we're going to be introducing to you at least one new staff member who's our new children's and youth minister um, and um, she will, be, will more information will come out about her this week so that's exciting um, and I think that's all I have anything else that needs announcing great please stand for the dismissal Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.